Folks, what a day. Um, I'm not really even sure where to begin, guys. Constitutional carry has been derailed for the moment in the Iowa Senate, and, and without some severe action on the part of gun owners, it may be derailed for the year, guys. I'm going to pause here for a bit, let you guys get signed in. Like a lot of guys who've been sending me private messages and texting me and want to have information, so I want you guys to all get signed in before I answer what's been going on in Des Moines for the last couple of hours. As you guys get signed in, let us know where you're watching from. I'm trying to make my way through Des Moines, heading back to our office right now. Um, guys, before I even mention what's going on here, I want to give you guys some context because, uh, let's see here, 45 minutes ago, the governor of Oklahoma, Governor Stitt, who's been governor for uh, two months, not even a full two months, Governor Stitt in Oklahoma just signed constitutional carry into law in Oklahoma. It happened It happened uh, half an hour ago, give or take now. So this bill is on fire everywhere. It passed in South Dakota. It passed in uh, Oklahoma today, and it's moving quickly in, in Kentucky. So now that you guys are all getting signed in, let me know you're watching from. So with all that going on, with all that going on, with all the emails you guys have sent in, the Senate Judiciary Committee tabled constitutional carry law today and did not have a vote. They tabled it, which means that there's been no action. Now, that does not mean the bill is dead. They've got eight more days before the funnel deadline, eight more days to take action. But what it does mean is that right now our best shot, which was... Uh, today, our best shot has come and gone. And what I'm hearing from a bunch of lawmakers is that there is a handful of lawmakers in that committee. And you know what? I'm not gonna. I, no, I'm no, I'm not gonna varnish this. There are oh, a handful of lawmakers in the state capitol who will actually fight for gun owners. <clears throat> and what we have are a whole bunch of people who sit there and tell you and I how pro gun they are how pro-gun they are, they want our money, they want our volunteer hours, they want our votes, they want our activism, and then now, when we give them the actual steps to take to move constitutional carry, nah, we're gonna pass. We're gonna pass. Screw you gun owners. That's the message that's being sent right now in the Senate Judiciary Committee. Now, I wanna be clear on this. There are some people in that committee who've been fighting to help advance this bill. Not everybody in that committee is doing this. But I'm going to give you guys, look, I'm heading back me off to the office right now, trying to wrap my head around what's going on on this. We're going to have more updates, maybe today, certainly tomorrow. I'm going to name a bunch of names here shortly uh, who specifically in this committee is blocking this bill because it's not that hard. There's 10 Republicans. There's five Democrats, and of the 10 Republicans, six of them co-sponsored the bill. So it's not, I don't need to have a rocket science degree to understand what's going on here. So we're going to have a lot of information for you guys coming out later today or tomorrow. I'm not sure which, but this has been derailed. This has been derailed. This bill, this law rather, this concept is law in 15 states as of as of an hour ago now in Oklahoma, as Governor Stitt just signed this bill into law, this, uh, this constant law in Oklahoma. So uh, we're approaching a third of the country. We're approaching a third of the country. And here in Iowa, we're being told, we're being told here in Iowa that, uh, you know what, screw you guys. We're not going to do it. We're not going to do it. You know, here, here's one uh, thing I'm going I'm to give you guys this right now. Here's the thing. Here's the deal. I'll give you an example. So we have Republican Senator uh, Courtneyer. I can't quite pronounce her name. Maybe it's Courtneyer. I don't know. Whatever. Something like that. She's a freshman lawmaker, freshman senator from Eastern Iowa. And we talked with her or tried talking with her in the election season and said, hey, can you uh, sign our candidate survey? Other senators did. She wouldn't do it. Never a good sign. Never a good sign. And a campaign for, I'm sorry, a, 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 a forum 
over the weekend, or last, or maybe it was two weekends ago now, Senator Cortnier comes out and attacks constitutional carry law. Attacks it. She's a Republican, folks. She's a Republican. She comes out, she attacks this bill, and she says that she's going to vote no. And what's amazing to me is that the, it, or the media were the ones that had to report the fact, because she didn't, she sure as heck didn't say it, they report the fact that Senator Cornier is a firearms instructor. And she gets paid to offer training classes. She gets paid, folks. She gets paid to offer training classes. And so she's the last kind of person who's going to vote for constitutional carry because you know what? It might impact her personal pocketbook. Now, we've discussed over the last couple of weeks on these video updates uh, the level of disgust that we have with gun stores and gun shops and those guys who are out there attacking the bill um, because they have a clear financial uh, interest they should be disclosing. Well, it's the exact same thing with Senator Cortnier. She's one of these people who gets paid to offer classes. Now, look, I don't care if she gets paid. It's a free country. We're not socialists. She should have to do her work for free. That's fine. But if you're going to sit here as a Republican and attack the heck out of the most popular gun bill anywhere right now, hadn't you at least better be honest enough to say, you know what, I should be clear, though, folks, I get kickbacks, I get paid to maintain the current system. And so apparently we have angered lawmakers because we referred to a senator who was opposing this bill because she gets paid to offer classes. You see, that's how ridiculous it is in the Iowa Capitol. These people, almost all of them, no backbone, no balls, no leadership. If you say something uh, truthful, if you say, hey, look, this person is opposed to this bill, and here's why. Well, that's mean. We're, we're Iowa nice. You can't say something mean. And if you do, if you do, we're going to come after you for it. That is one, just one example of the absolute ridiculous culture in the Iowa Capitol. And make no mistake, these are our friends. This is being done by Republicans. Is every Republican bad on guns in the Capitol? Of course not. But if these people will not move the most popular gun bill in Iowa, I mean, they want us to sit there and varnish this. They want us to say only good things, praise us, sing our praises, protect us. Tell your members that we're trying. Tell your members that we're trying. That's what they want us to say. That's what the Iowa Firearms Coalition says. Oh, well, we're trying and uh, you know, we'll do all we can. And uh, but I mean, This is crap. We have a monster majority in the Senate. We have a majority in the House. We have a supposedly pro-gun. I have to do a U-turn here. Hopefully I'm not smacked by a semi. Give me just a second here, guys. Traffic is kind of crazy where I'm at right now. There we go. So we have all these people who are sitting here telling us how pro-gun they are. And they killed it. They killed it. If you're getting signed in late, guys, constitutional carry has been, for at least for today, derailed in the Iowa Senate Judiciary Committee. We have eight more days, eight more days to put pressure on this committee. And I can assure you in emails and by social media and stuff, tomorrow that fight will begin. We're gonna give you guys names of which senators on the committee, which senators that we know are the ones who are opposing the bill. I don't know, they, they, they did not vote. They did not vote. So I wanna be clear, there wasn't a yes vote and a no vote, but what they, they went to caucus and they came out of caucus and I was told by the chair that they don't have the votes and that people are angry. They're angry because Iowa gun owners, you guys, you guys dare to hold lawmakers accountable. Now I'm not saying that Brad Zahn was attacking you guys. What I'm saying is that their caucus, their caucus is saying that. 
They are outraged. They are outraged that they're hearing from all of you. They're outraged that you've emailed them so many times. They're outraged that you have gone to your forums and talked to lawmakers in person. They're outraged. Like Stephen uh, Corwin says, be a good boy now, be a good boy. That's what these people want. They want lobbyists and they want citizens to sit there and shut up and let them decide. Let them decide. I don't know about you guys, but these people, they work for us. You know, and Steve Soders forgot that. And Mike Gronstall, who I saw today in the Capitol, by the way, Mike Gronstall forgot that. And Stacey Apple forgot that. And Paul Shamshore forgot that. And Daryl Beal forgot that. All these lawmakers and many, many, many more are gone because the members of Iowa gun owners made it happen. Guys, we need candidates. We need people who will fight for gun owners. We don't need yes men anymore in the Capitol. We have a, a hundred of them. We got tons of them. Yes men everywhere. And, and they want you to be nice and they want you to be winsome. But as states all over the country are moving constitutional carry here in Iowa, they just gave a middle finger to you and I. Again, if you're getting tuned in late, Oklahoma just passed it. The governor, look, it passed in Oklahoma at around 3.30 or quarter to four. And the governor in Oklahoma, maybe a half an hour or 45 minutes ago, he already signed it. It's already law in Oklahoma. It happened today. It happened today. And so in, in one two-month time span, in one two-month time span, we had South Dakota pass constitutional carry into law. Now we have Oklahoma has passed it into law. And uh, Kentucky is on the cusp. It's on the cusp. And here in Iowa, it was a middle finger to gun owners today. Disgusting. Disgusting. Jamie says, who is Mike Gronstall? We had Gronstalls in Carroll when I grew up. Any relation to Dan? Uh, Jamie, Mike Gronstall is the former Senate Majority Leader, 34-year incumbent that was kicked out of office by gun owners in 2016. Uh, this organization spent approximately 35 uh, grand, 40 grand in that race on radio ads, TV ads, uh, social media, uh, boots on the ground, mail, everything to expose Senator Gronstall and gun owners came out of the woodwork and threw him to the curb. You know, that makes a great point, by the way. I see Eric is watching, and Eric Jamez from Council Bluffs, as I believe you're from Council Bluffs, Eric. Eric is a, is a great, uh, you, you teed off my next talking point. I'll tell you right now, one of the names uh, from today that uh, did not side with us is Senator Dan Dawson. Senator Dan Dawson. Now, Senator Dawson replaced Mike Gronstall. Senator Dawson signed our candidate survey 100%. Not only did he say he would co-sponsor constitutional carry law, he said in writing he would sponsor it and lead the charge. What's he done? Not only did he refuse to co-sponsor, and I talked to him this session, and he, uh, he refused to co-sponsor, broke his campaign promise, not only did he refuse to co-sponsor, he is one of the four, he has to be one of the four who screwed you, screwed you guys today in that committee. Again, let's be clear, there's 10 Republicans and five Democrats on the Judiciary Committee. Of the, of the 10 Republicans, six of them co-sponsored the bill. That leaves four. I'm not a big math guy, but where I come from, 10 minus six, is four. And so of those four, Dan Dawson is one of them. He got, he again, to be very clear, he received, not directly, but indirectly, we spent of your money, your money, we spent 35, give or take, thousand dollars in that race in 2016 because it was crucial that Mike Gronstall not be in a position to blockade your gun rights anymore. And we did everything, radio, TV, 
Many of you guys joined me. I had my kids out there. We were going door to door, house to house. We hit 5,000 houses, 5,000 doors in Council Bluffs with our materials. We were doing mail. We were doing slicks. We were doing all of it. And you guys and the members of Iowa Gun Owners stood up and threw him out and put Dan Dawson in. And this is how Senator Dawson repays your support. A middle finger to gun owners here in Iowa. Brian Haney says, I want to know who voted against. Brian, there was not a vote. What they did is they went to caucus. That's a private meeting. The Democrats have their caucus. Republicans have their caucus. And they sit around and figure out, okay, what are we going to do with these bills? And they came out of caucus, and the Republicans told me that they did not have the votes, and they pulled the bill from the agenda. And they're not going to vote on it until they're 100% sure because they don't want people like you, Brian, to know who screwed you. But I'm just going to tell you right now, it's easy. Again, we had to have eight. We needed to have eight to pass committee. That's it, eight. We had six of those 10 Republicans on the committee who co-sponsored, okay? So all we had to have was two of the remaining four support the bill. And of that, we got none. We got none. One of those names, let me uh, catch this corner here, guys. Give me a second. One of those names is Dan Dawson. Another one of those names is Senator Amy Sinclair. Amy Sinclair. Now, you guys have been hearing about her for a bit. A lot of you guys have called the office. Amy's from down around Knoxville. Perhaps, I mean, perhaps one of the most Republican, one of the most pro-gun, anyway, districts in the entire state of Iowa. Incredible support down there for constitutional carry. Incredible support. And Amy Sinclair has been a nasty thorn in our side for a very long time. She refused to co-sponsor as memory serves. I have to double check. As memory serves, she refused to co-sponsor stand your ground law for the last couple of years until we passed that in 2017. She damn sure refused to co-sponsor constitutional carry law. This year, when I asked her in person at the Capitol, very nice, respect, respectful, got a suit and tie on, you know, Senator Sinclair, do you have a moment to talk about constitutional carry? You know, she won't come out when I send her a note. She will not respond to email. And so I saw her walking by down the, down the, uh, the rotunda. Senator Sinclair, do you have a moment to talk about constitutional carry? And she turns around and uh, in an extremely childish, bitter, bitter display, she's like, I will not co-sponsor constitutional carry. There, is that clear enough for you? And I said, sure, it's crystal clear. Just wanted an answer. Just wanted an answer. So she's one of these people. She's one of the, she's, she's a, that's, that's, that's at least one other of the Republicans today on judiciary who oppose the bill. Shameful, shameful, insulting. The number one reason, the number one reason other than Donald Trump, guys, is my video okay? I'm getting a lot of uh, delays. I can see my voice kind of locking up. Can you guys hear me okay? Give me a thumbs up if you guys can hear me okay, if you can see me okay. I want to make sure the audio is good. I'm going to kind of pause here for a moment. Somebody give me a thumbs up or a heart or something so I can kind of verify my uh, my audio here. There we go. All right, I'm getting a lot of comments. <clears throat> All right, good deal. So this is, this is absolutely incredible. This is probably one of the most pro-gun districts in the state. And uh, Amy Sinclair just says, screw you. Disgusting. But see, here's how the game is played. So I can guarantee you, folks, I can guarantee you right now, with 150 people watching this video a few minutes ago, I know how this works. There are staffers all over the Iowa Capitol right now who are watching this video. And I guarantee you, by now, I've been going live for about, what, 10 minutes? So by by now, they're texting. Oh my gosh, Aaron Doerr is saying mean things about Senator Sinclair. Aaron Doerr is calling out Senator Courtney here. And this is how it works in Iowa. Apparently, what they expect of you and I is nothing but praise. If we ever dare to tell the truth, 
if we ever dare to say this person is betraying you, then all of a sudden we're horrible, mean people. Is it, is it, is it, is it too much to ask? That we can just have lawmakers who will just be honest and just say, you know what, I support that bill, or you know what, I don't support that bill. But in, in Iowa, you guys have all heard of Iowa Nice. You all know what Iowa Nice means. You all know what Iowa Nice means. So in Iowa, they expect you to never say anything controversial, never say anything mean, never say anything that might uh, get somebody in trouble. And heavens to Betsy, if you are doing politics on the Republican side of the equation, that rule goes triple. You can't ever say anything negative. You can't ever say anything nasty. You can't ever say anything truthful unless that puts us in a good light. That is the rule of the road at the Capitol. Disgusting. Disgusting. I, I have no problem with Iowa nice. I just prefer Iowa honest. I prefer Iowa principled. I prefer Iowa straight up. I prefer some version of the truth over this crap. Got my good friend Senator Bouchard watching right now. Senator Bouchard is from the great state of Wyoming, the cowboy state. And in Wyoming, just last year, Senator Bouchard, and I was proud to be a part of this effort, past senior ground law because at least last session in Wyoming, for example, Republican senators out there actually fought for the Second Amendment. But again, here in Iowa, they derailed constitutional carry law, guys. It's been derailed in committee, and I want to be clear on this, it was not brought up for a vote. That's how the game is played. They go to caucus, which is a private meeting Republicans have their caucus, the Democrats have their caucus, they discuss the bills on the agenda for the day, they have their caucus, they decide who's a yes, who's a no, they come back from caucus, and that's what they're going to do. And so, because they did not have eight votes on constitutional carry, because they did not have that, they, uh, they killed it. They killed it. Now, I want to be clear on this, we have eight days. We have eight days, and uh, tomorrow we're going to begin to unleash tremendous programs in these districts. We're going to unleash it. And so, you guys, you've got to stay tuned to your inbox. You have to stay tuned to this Facebook feed because we're going to unleash programs in these districts to put pressure on these people. I want to be clear on this. Julian Garrett's name keeps popping up. Senator Garrett is one of the four who did not co-sponsor. But I want to be clear on this. Senator Garrett and I have probably had, I don't know, three or four discussions this session about constitutional carry. I believe that he is a pro-gun vote on this issue if it gets into the committee. I believe that the other people who are blocking this, I believe that's going to be that Senator Nunn. We have not mentioned Senator Nunn. How did I forget Senator Nunn? Senator Nunn, Shipley, I'm, geez Louise, I'm, it's been a long day. Senator Nunn, Sinclair, and Dawson. These are the three in particular who are blocking passage of this bill. These are the three. I want to be kind of clear on that uh, when it comes to Julian Garrett. I want to read some of the comments here. I can't read uh, only what I see on, the, on, the, on my phone. I can't scroll as I'm driving right now. Um, I want to be clear on this though. Um, let's see. One of the questions, how, how long has it killed for? Somebody said, well, we have eight days. We have eight days. Next Thursday, close of business is the funnel week in the Iowa Capitol. So if this bill is not moved through a committee by Friday, Thursday, close of business, then we're, then we're dead. Then we're dead. Uh, Vinny Brown, if you can pull down Julian Garrett's email. Julian Garrett is one of the four, but he is not the guy who needs to hear from gun owners. It is the other three. It's Senator Nunn, Dawson, and Sinclair, not Julian Garrett. If you can do me a favor, maybe you can just remove that comment. I'd appreciate that. I believe Senator Garrett is good to go on this issue based on our conversations. It's the other three who are screwing us hardcore right now. So please take down, if you could, uh, Julian Garrett's uh, information on that. You know, so I just can't. I, 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 we got done the meeting, and I was talking to some of the senators there who were giving the information. I told them, you know, 
I was like, do you guys even understand what you're doing here? You think that I am hardcore? You think that I am aggressive? Do you have any idea how, how ruthless the members of Iowa gun owners are to lawmakers who screw us? Do you have any idea? You think I'm a problem? Wait till the members of Iowa gun owners hear about that. I told them that directly today, guys. Wait till the members of IGO hear about this betrayal. <clears throat> so guys, this is all gonna come down to uh, power, to pressure, um, to political pressure being applied on the right people. Absolutely disgusting betrayal today, guys. I could not, I couldn't believe it. Look, this is deja vu from a year ago. We got past the subcommittee a year ago. And then we had the uh, Parkland, Florida shooting the day before committee, and they pulled the bill. They pulled it. A year later, we're well past Parkland. Everybody says, oh, we had the votes. We had the votes. And uh, today it was tabled. Uh, virtually killed. Not a guarantee. We have eight days, and we're going to have tons of information out there, guys for you tomorrow. Elizabeth has the right idea. I'll be flooding their emails. None, Dawson, and Sinclair got it. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. That is the action item. Uh, I could not post their names and their emails in this video because I'm driving and I was leaving the Capitol and I uh, didn't have time. So that's where we are right now, guys. I just can't, I, look, I can't stress enough to you guys. Uh, I'm just gonna be very blunt here. We need your resources. I cannot thank you enough for your activism. Your calls and emails have driven this where it is so far, but we need you guys to be involved as members as well. I get it. I get it that people, and look, it's a tough time for some people. I totally understand that. My wife and I have six kids. It's always a struggle. I totally understand. But if you guys can join up, it's joinigo.com. Joinigo.com. We need resources to hammer these people with. We have uh, on our website also, uh, iowagunowners.org, there's a donate tab. And if you want to donate, you can set it up where you donate five bucks a month if you want to. You can donate one time for any amount. We have some people that can't afford a lot. Totally get it. They give five bucks a month. That's phenomenal. Five bucks a month over the course of a year, that's fantastic. Some folks can do major contributions and I appreciate that equally equally whatever you guys can do we need you to be involved in this fight we need you to be involved in this fight as a member so if you haven't yet joined up guys I need you to get involved it's joinigo.com I can't post it right now as I'm driving but joinigo.com that's where you want to go to get signed up as a member because this is what we're talking about political program in these seats consists of things like mass emails in their districts. We're talking about targeted social media in their districts, talking about potentially um, specific mailings in their districts. We look, I mean, it just, <laughs> we have to rip away, we have to rip away any pretense that these people are our friends because they're not. They're not. They're screwing us. And we have to go to war to make that point. And we have to expose these people to get this done. And so we need resources, guys, to make this happen. You know, Iowa was one of the one of the very last states to do away with May issue back in uh, 2010, long time ago now. Not that long ago, though. One of the last states in the country to pass shall issue. We're on the tail end, by far, of the states that pass um, state of ground law. And now, as all of these states all around us are moving constitutional carry, and again, if you're getting signed in right now, guys, I see my good friend Chris Hattendorf getting signed in. I see Bob Rich. I see my wife watching right now. As you guys get signed in, you might not have heard me, but just about uh, maybe an hour ago now, 45 minutes ago, the governor of Oklahoma signed constitutional carry into law. So today, a 15th state, or is that 16? I, I've lost track. I think it's 15. 15 states now have constitutional carry law on the books. <clears throat> Two states this year, and Kentucky is getting very close. We may have three states this year. And here in Iowa, the Judiciary Committee, at least for right now, has derailed constitutional carry. 
it's, it's just it's indefensible. It's it's just it's insane. It's insane. Iowa gun owners, you guys aren't very respectful. You guys aren't very nice. You guys are pretty aggressive in your tone. I'm sorry, you people work for us. We don't work for you. We don't exist to give you power. You exist to defend the Constitution. Guys, I'm just gonna tell you, Iowa nice is the problem. I know it's held up there as a fantastic virtue, and certainly in many cases it is. When you see some of the flat tire on the side of the road, we pull over, we change the tire. That's Iowa nice. When a lawmaker says, screw you, I'm not gonna support your bill because you actually uh, push us to do this, that's not Iowa nice. That's Iowa screw you. And that's what happened today. Gun owners were screwed in the Judiciary Committee. I wanna be clear, again, I've already said it twice. I'll say it a third time. Not every member of that committee screwed us. On the contrary, six of them, six of them co-sponsored the bill. Um, from memory, actually I have the list here, I think. Nah, I'm driving. From memory, Zahn, Chapman, uh, Schultz, Whiting, Shipley, and one more uh, co-sponsored the bill. So that's good. So that's good. But we needed 10. Actually, we needed eight. We needed eight out of the 10 Republicans. We needed two more. Two more between Senators uh, Dawson, Sinclair. It's been a long day. Dawson, Sinclair, Garrett, and I forget the fourth name. I'm sorry. None. I'm sorry. Senator None. Between those four, we needed two. And we couldn't get it. We couldn't get it. Not yet, anyway. Not yet. Again. We're not done. We have eight days. We have eight days. We will be done eight days from now. We'll be done in eight days. If we don't get the votes in judiciary, we're done. And so, you know, they want us to get down on bended knee and kiss their tail. And we're not going to do it. These people work for us. Cody says, there's a time for Iowa nice and a time to do what needs to be done as tactfully as possible. I mean, look, that's just, that's just the bottom line. I mean, Iowa nice does not equal, does not equal, screw you. I'm not going to do what you want because you're asking me too much. I mean, uh, Chris Hattendorf says, what is their reasoning? Their reason is very simple. They said that they don't like the fact that Iowans are emailing them so much. They don't like the fact, this, I, I'm hearing that from the House, to be very clear, not in the Senate side. Mm -hmm. They don't like the fact that we dare to mention we dare to mention that Senator Cortnier, a Republican senator, for heaven's sakes, that Senator Cortnier is publicly attacking this bill while she forgets to tell people that she's a trainer and she gets paid. She gets paid to offer training classes. Now, I don't mind if she gets paid. That's fine. I mean, you offer a service, you should get paid. That's cool. But if you're going to oppose constitutional carry... If you're gonna vote or, or actively work against the biggest, most popular pro-gun bill anywhere in America right now, which is constitutional carry, if you're gonna do that, you would damn sure better be honest with the constituents and say, you know what, just to be clear, I get paid to offer training classes. This is not the first time. When I was helping pass constitutional carry in Missouri in 2016, we had Republicans, two of them in the House at that time, who were opposing the bill, and uh, they were trainers. They were trainers. And uh, our sister organization down there, the Missouri Firearms Coalition, they outed them on social media and said, at the very least, you should be quiet and be a neutral vote. Uh, or, and down there, they have, a, they have a conflicted, I believe it is, voting status, where if this bill directly impacts your livelihood, you cannot vote on the bill. That way you can never be accused of having a conflict. Mm -hmm. Pretty obvious issue, right? Well, here in Iowa, it's not the way it works. And so Senator Courtney, who gets paid to offer classes, mm -hmm. is attacking the bill because that might in some ways if, uh, impact mm -hmm. her personal compensation. Disgusting, just disgusting. That's part of the reasoning, uh, Chris. Mm -hmm. and so the, at the end of the day here, guys, it's just very simple. They expect you and I to have their backs no matter what. They want you and I to sing their praises. They want you and I to protect them 
Because you know what? That's what the Iowa Firearms Coalition does. They give them good grades, they protect them, they sing their praises, and then if, if, if you do that, then they love you. But if you dare hold them accountable, if you dare expose them for who they are, then uh, this is part of the way they try to get back at you. <clears throat> guys, I'm not going to accept it. I hope you guys will join me in this. We need to light up the phones, light up the emails. A lot of folks have already filed these emails and phone numbers in the comment section. Thank you so much. But there's only one answer here, and that is political pressure, overwhelming amounts of political pressure. Because, like I said now, it's, it's kind of my new phrase right now, Iowa nice is a cover for Iowa screw you. And these people will sit there and they'll smile. They'll smile to your face and say, oh, I support the Second Amendment. I support Second Amendment. And they go and do this. And then if you if you try to hold them accountable, they'll say, no, I, I still support Second Amendment. I just, I just don't support constitutional carry. I, you know, I, 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 I mean, whatever they say, it's just crap. It's just utter crap. They want you to believe that, hey, we, we have to be nice. We have to be, we have to be deferential. These people, there are there are state senators. And look, I'm gonna be kind of blunt, I get it. Uh, I was raised in a Christian home. Iowa is a conservative evangelical state. Uh, I was raised to respect my elders. Uh, my wife and I are raising our kids to respect their elders. But there is a difference between honoring your father and your mother and honoring your state senator, especially when your state senator is giving you the one-fingered salute in committee. That's not honor. That's being betrayed. And if we don't sound the alarm, if we don't call that out for what it is, then our children will pay the price. Because these people are working themselves into a minority status faster than I can imagine. The House already lost five seats last November. They already lost it. They're only, they only have a 54, I think it is, 54 seat majority right now. And so what the House is telling us, the House is telling us that, well, we, we can't do anything controversial because that might uh, endanger our seats. Well, I mean, how'd it work out for you in the fall? You killed constitutional carry last year. You lost five seats. Does anybody watch this video right now think that Michael Bloomberg, that, that Bloomberg's people, that, that Bloomberg's forces are going to give these people a pass because they killed this bill? No. They're going to attack them either way because of their party affiliation. These people are not going to get a pass from the left by screwing us. All they're doing is screwing us. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. So guys, like I said, we're gonna have emails coming out tomorrow. We're gonna have social media coming out tomorrow. Lots of information coming out tomorrow on the specific lawmakers you guys need to contact to make sure they know, to make sure they know what you think of this action. River Gray says, what format is everyone using in these emails? River, uh, people are posting the email addresses of these folks right now spontaneously. So you can grab the emails and send them whatever you want. We're going to have some more structured emails coming out tomorrow. But the the uh, the issue here is really simple. You know, you're outraged that with now 15 states having passed constitutional carry, two states in the last six weeks, I don't know, five weeks, you're outraged that Republican controlled Republican controlled committees in the state Senate cannot do the bare minimum of passing this bill out to the floor. Outrageous, outrageous. Again, six, six of the 10 Republicans on the committee are in favor. They co-sponsored, they co-sponsored. Oh, let's see here, Trevor Moore says, give us a, a brief recap. Um, all right, man, my voice is losing it, so I'll be kind of brief here, Trevor. Long story short, uh, the governor in Oklahoma today Signed constitutional carry into law at around, I don't know, 4.30, 4.45, so in the last hour and a half. And so as that's happening, and as Kentucky today passed the bill out of their final committee, 
as it moves all across the country. Here in Iowa today, the Senate Judiciary Committee tabled constitutional carry law. They tabled it. What that means is there was no vote. They didn't vote yes or no. They had a private caucus. They all sat down, discussed the bill in private, and they uh, they went to go and see if they had the votes. And of the, we, we needed to have eight. We needed to have eight. We sure had six, because six of those 10 Republicans had already co-sponsored the bill. Sorry. We had to have eight. We already have six. And of the four who were remaining, they wouldn't do it. They screwed us. Dan Dawson, one of the chief culprits. Amy Sinclair, Zach Nunn. These three Republican senators, they screwed you, folks. They refused to back the bill. Julian Garrett is number four, but I want to be clear for just to be totally clear here. Julian Garrett and I have talked about this bill numerous times this session. I believe that Julian Garrett is a pro-gun vote if and when this thing goes to a committee vote and to a floor vote. He's always done so before. Um, so I hold him in different categories. Um, that's, that's, and that's the reason why. But uh, these other three, Sinclair, Dawson, and Nunn, they screwed you guys bad. Bad. And so here's what's going to happen. Here's what's going to happen. Because they screwed you on constitutional carry law, here's what's going to happen. As they begin to feel the rage of gun owners, they're going to begin to move other gun bills. I can guarantee it. Maybe it's the bill, and some of these will be good bills. Maybe it's the bill to allow people with permits to carry on school property when dropping off their kids. Okay, that's a good bill. That'd be great. You know, sure. Maybe it's the bill that deals with uh, carrying in courthouses or other gun-free zones. Yeah, that's a good bill. Sure. But realize what's happening. They're only going to be passing bills like that now because these bills have gone nowhere uh, substantive so far. And so as these bills begin to move now, realize why it's moving, why they're moving. They, they will be moving because gun owners, you guys, are outraged at their stabbing constitutional carry in the back. And so they're going to sit there and tell you guys that, oh, hell, I'm not anti-gun. Aaron Doerr is a liar. Iowa gun owners is lying. I'm not bad on guns. I voted for all this stuff. And so insofar as that happens, well, that's great. I mean, we're advancing um, stuff. But the big the big issue, the big gain here in Iowa right now, guys, is constitutional carry. And these guys did not do it. This is, this is a cut and paste scenario. Hold on. This is a cut and paste scenario from what Steve Sauters did in 2016. They were about to have their clocks cleaned in the elections. They knew that. They were blocking stand your ground law at that time. And so what did he do? He brought up a suppressor bill. Okay, we'll take it. He uh, he legalized carrying firearms on a snowmobile uh, or an ATV. Okay, fine, we'll take it. But it's only being done to divert pressure. It's only being done to divert pressure. And that is disgusting. Trevor Moore, yes, it can be. We have eight more days yet, Trevor. I see your question there. <clears throat> a week from tomorrow, next Thursday, is the final deadline. So we have until Thursday on send a file 165. We have until next Thursday. Um, I'm reading some of the comments here. Um, oh, man. Guys, uh, I'm going to have to sign off. I'm about ready to lose my voice. Do me, do me three favors, please. Number one, share the hell out of this video. Make sure everybody sees it. Make sure all your gun buddies see what's going on. Share it, share it, share it, share That's number one. Number two, visit joinigo.com. If you haven't yet joined up, guys, joinigo.com. Join with this grassroots army. We need to have your guys' support to maintain this fight. And I had number three. I forgot what it was. Oh, yeah. I'm going to send you guys some private friend requests. I'm trying to grow my personal page to have more and more people see what's happening in this fight for gun rights. So as you see some personal requests from me, that's what it is for me, I'm trying to uh, to grow the size of my personal page a little bit. So guys, that's what I've got right now. Guys, have a great night. Share the video. I'll be having more information for you guys tomorrow. I got to sign off before my voice totally cracks. And uh, Kristen Dorr, my wife, gets the last comment. Uh, honey, I'm coming home in about 20 minutes, so that's my schedule. See you guys. Have a great night. Take care.